Welcome to Locust Motorworks, the channel where we like to take deep dives into some of John Deere's coolest history and check out some machinery that made them legendary. Today, we're going to be talking about the John Deere 110. Now, this is just an introduction to garden tractors as we hope to get to the 112, 120, and 140 in the future. These tractors were all built at around the same time and offered some of the best reliance and crazy attachments that I've ever seen. From plows, planters, and cultivators, we're going to cover them all. John Deere also went ahead and had one of the best marketing campaigns in all the lawnmowers at the time. The 110 was dubbed the Weekend Freedom Machine. Anything with a name like that is right up my alley. Now doing research on some of these, I kept finding out new facts that even was surprising me. So stay tuned, we got a good episode coming. This story takes us all the way back to the early 60s, specifically 1963, upon the release of the first John Deere riding mower. This would be the John Deere 110. These 110s would be built in Horicon, Wisconsin, being released alongside the new generation tractors that included the 1010, 2010, 3010, and 4010. Some of the cosmetic features on this tractor you can definitely see were pulled from the 30 and 40 tens, making it appealing to farmers and also urban customers. One of the easiest ways to determine the year of the 110 is by looking at the fenders. The early models had the round fenders, where the late ones had square. John Deere would go on to put 7 horse Kohler engines in most of these early 110s, along with a few 8 horse Kohlers. Where these lawn tractors really begin to shine is in the use of attachments. We're going to be going over some of the attachments that were on this mower that in today's world you'd never see on a garden tractor. At number one, we have the front mounted air compressor. Now this is a belt driven air compressor that was able to get up to 100 PSI, which made it perfect for filling up tires in the field. Next up, we have the 10 inch moldboard plow. Now this was a little 10 inch plow that could cut furrows up to five inches deep. John Deere would also offer a toolbar for this tractor that offered the availability to attach a scraper blade. Another cool thing they had was a planter slash fertilizer unit. You could plant beans, peas, corn, or similar according to Deere with this and apply fertilizer with the same machine. Up next we have the row crop cultivator. Now this could go from 6 to 42 inches wide and feature 7 reversible high carbon steel shovels and 2 rubber gauge wheels. One of the coolest attachments had to be the disc. Discs were 11 inches in diameter and 8 discs to a gang. These discs could cover 29 to 39 inches wide. Next up we have the rotary broom. This was a 4 foot wide broom that attached to the front of the lawn tractor and it cleaned a 42 inch swath. When it came to sprayers, John Deere offered a couple options. A rear mounted one and a rear type pole. The number 5A sprayer was the rear type puller that offered its own 2.5 horse engine on it and the mounted one was integrated right in and that was the number 7 sprayer. Moving on, John Deere would offer a pull behind cart that was the model 80 along with a 38 inch mower deck and a 42 inch mower deck. To add to the list of attachments, we'll get to the more common ones here in a bit. It's also worth noting that alongside the 110 from 1966 to 1969, the John Deere Model 60 lawn tractor was available. This was a smaller alternative to the 110, having a different style 6 horse Tecumseh engine on it. Moving forward to safety, John Deere would be the industry's first to add a triple safe ignition system. This would mean the lawn tractor would have to be in neutral, along with the deck turned off for the tractor to be started. The early 110s would come with a 3 speed transmission that would have a top speed of 6.5 miles an hour. The second transmission that was offered was the Peerless 2300. Now this one had a top speed of 6.5 miles an hour also, but it also featured a variable speed control. This speed control gave operators the availability to go faster while staying in the same gear as along with varying the speed and giving you more speed options. One of the variants of this machine was the 110H. The H stood for hydraulic. This meant it had a hydraulic lift on the deck. The overall weight of these tractors was 502 pounds, which is why this tractor offered so many different attachments and was able to use them. Now back to some of the more common attachments built for this lawn tractor. John Deere offered a Model 30 tiller, which is very useful even to this day for tilling gardens, along with a 36 inch snow thrower. John Deere also would offer a 42 inch push blade that made it cool for either clearing snow or just playing in the dirt. 
there'd be two different loaders built for this lawn tractor, including the Danco loader and the Johnson loader. Now both of these loaders would have a capacity of over 600 pounds, with the Johnson beating the Danco by 25 extra lift pounds. A couple of the more rare attachments would be an electrical front spreader, along with a rotary leaf and grass rake, a grill guard, and a mounted dump cart. With roughly 4,500 made between 1963 and 1967, John Deere decided they needed to reintroduce the 110 and add on some better features. John Deere would decide to restyle the fenders on this, giving it a square styled look, along with changing the seat from the bucket style to more of a modern looking seat. John Deere would also go on to make changes on the engines that were offered, still offering the 8 horse Kohler, but also offering the 10 horse Kohler, which became a lot better engine. One of the drawbacks to this engine was prolonged side hill use. The engine didn't have a good enough oil operating system to keep the engine cool. Along with the new styled version of the John Deere 110, they would come on and release a few more attachments. Those coming in the looks of a PTO, made for operating small elevators and augers, along with a mounted generator. John Deere would also offer some small accessories that included front lights, a small vinyl style cab, a sunshade, a storage cover, and wheel covers. These wheel covers were chrome that gave what John Deere called the finishing touch. It is worth to note that these wheel covers were also available on some of the early 110s. Sticking with the wheels, there is an adjustable rear wheel kit available. But this option is very hard to find in today's world. The weight on these newer style 110s would also increase, going up to 632 pounds, along with giving it bigger front and rear tires. It made for a more beefy tractor. John Deere would only use one style transmission in these later 110s, and that'd be the Peerless 2300. Now this was the same transmission used on some of the early ones, but John Deere would change how the shifter would sit and how you'd shift gears, making it a more redefined and better looking tractor. John Deere would also go on to make some small changes to the foot pedals on this, going from an all steel pedal to adding a rubber pad. Most of the early 110s featured a clutch and brake all in one pedal. John Deere would go on to change this on the later ones, keeping the clutch pedal but also giving you an individual brake pedal. This would make running this machine a lot smoother. In 1969, John Deere would offer their first patio series 110s. Now these 110s would be mainly for marketing, but they wouldn't do as good as John Deere had hoped. Deere would paint these new patio tractors dogwood white with one exception of changing the hood color and the seat color. There'd be a couple different options that were available, including spruce blue, patio red, april yellow, and sunset orange, along with the classic green and yellow that was the standard. From what I've read, most of these patio additions were custom order, where the customer would pick out what color they wanted and have it shipped to the dealer that way. But it still is very interesting to think about seeing a red John Deere sitting on the lot. By 1971, John Deere had figured out that these tractors weren't selling as well as they hoped and decided to discontinue them. With the tractors painted white that were left over, John Deere repainted these to green. Some of these you can still find the serial number and note what color it was originally painted. It's also worth noting that most of these tractors came out of the factory with 8.5 inch wide tires, but some were upgraded to have narrow tires on it for different operations. John Deere would go on to build this 110 for three more years, officially ending production in 1974, with the final asking price of $1,115. Besides being John Deere's first ever riding lawnmower, the 110 is also one of the most sought after lawn and garden tractors to this day. The list of attachments continued to grow over the years, growing to be over 30 different attachments that would go on to this mower, most attachments being produced later years that still were able to bolt on to the 110, including such examples as a log splitter. Other companies produced attachments specifically for the 110, including the Haben Company. They made a sycamore that was a belly mount style. And the rarest of all is the Sweepster. Now this turns your ordinary 110 into a golf cart. So when you're done mowing, you can hit the course all weekend long. Some people have said that there's only nine of these in existence today, but that number hasn't been confirmed. This is a two-seat addition with a spot for clubs behind it that lets you take your 110 onto any of your favorite golf courses. 
So I'm curious, how many of you guys have ran a 110 John Deere, and what did you think of it? Let me know down in the comments. Also, let me know your favorite lawn and garden tractor, whether it's Deere or some other brand. And also, make sure and stay tuned for the rest of this tractor series, which will include the 112, the 120, and the coveted 140 John Deere lawn and garden tractor. Anyways, I would like to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next history video.